Blue skies and rainbows and sunbeams from heaven are what I can see. When my Lord is living in me, I know that Jesus is well and alive today. He makes his home in my heart. Nevermore will I be all alone since he promised me that we never would part. Tall mountains, green valleys, the beauty that surrounds me All makes me aware of the one who made it all I know that Jesus is well and alive today He makes his home in my heart Nevermore will I be all alone Since he promised me that we never would part Jesus loves me, this I know for the Bible tells me so, little ones to him belong, they are weak but he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible tells me so. Dear God, thank you for this day, let the orphans and poor feel better. Let's take her here, feel better, and all the friends that are at church. Thank you for this day. I hope you all feel better. Amen. Well, welcome back. I told you we would continue this discussion. I've, I'm so excited to continue our discussion with my good friend, uh, Becky Brooks. And uh, Becky, I want to talk about significant others, and not in the way that we usually use that term. We usually talk about our spouses, and that's, that's, a, that's a whole different conversation. I want to talk about the significant people in your kid's life. Who have you intentionally, deliberately positioned in their lives to say, I trust you. I love you. I need you to know these people. Um, you know, I'm. This is going to come as a shock to many in our audience, but I'm not an athletic guy, and so, uh, but my boys are, and so I've had to find people that can go. No, this is how you. I I, I call their practices rehearsals because I don't know the like. For me, we only yeah we only went to rehearsal because I'm a nerd. And um, so, so I have no practical wisdom about that. So I have to kind of find other people. Um, but that came from me, from, uh, from my family of origin of not like, I love my dad, but he doesn't fix anything. And then Rhonda's dad can fix anything because he grew up on a farm. And so I knew uh, for me that I needed some men in my life and women in my life, honestly, uh, that had different skills that, that could could teach me that or I could kind of mentor under. Um, and I, I know that that's true with our kids. And I, I saw this first as a youth minister, parents who would just really, I just thought it was brilliant, seek out people in their kid's life and say, I want you to know them. And if that meant you're going to go spend time with them or we're going to carve out time on a weekend or you're going to go fishing with them. Um, are, are there people like that in your kid's life that you and Tony oh. have said, these are yes. the ones. Yes, for sure. And one of the things that I have from from growing up is my my parents used to tell us to learn to recognize a yes face and a no face. All right. In in people. And and one of the things I think now as an adult I'm realizing I think they really taught us how to recognize the Holy Spirit working yeah. in other people. And and at, but as children, they would even say at church, "Hey, if you get lost here, Go look for someone who's a yes face. Who's a yes face? And we'd list off some people, and and they'd say you're exactly right. And and isn't it crazy that even at church there's people with a no face? Oh, it was. <laughs> I, I, I think yeah. about that real often. What is my face? Do my what does my face say to people when I'm walking by? I think a huge, huge, significant <laughs> blessing that we have been given is my parents are extremely intentional people. And, and so we really want our kids around them as much as possible. My, they have a ranch in West Texas. As often as we can, we send our kids out there to work alongside my dad and, and to, to be with my mom because they are pouring 
they're they're first off they're fun yeah they're hard workers and 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 they're intentionally pouring truth another thing is that just that we're gathering constantly new people in our lives as as we recognize what our kids giftings are yeah. And Jeff, a huge conviction for us, and, and I, I want you to know already we look back and think, how could we do this different? Our boys are both great athletes, and and one of the things that we realized was how much time we were spending a week on practice, Yeah, on practice, when in reality, the chances of them taking those athletic gifts, I mean, let's, let, I mean, let's be hopeful that maybe they will play in college. Maybe they won't. But even then, there's a lifespan on those yep. gifts yep. that comes to an end much quicker than their relationship with Jesus. Absolutely. Much quicker even than their relationship with each other. And so one of the things that we started realizing was how important it is we're giving coaches eight, ten hours a week. Yes. In coaching their athletic abilities. And we want to do that. They're gifted. Let's let's work on those. But we had to really evaluate where are we spending time? Where are we putting them around godly men wow. who are modeling being great parents, being great dads, being great husbands, being great leaders, being influential in our community. And so we've really restructured a lot of our life here in recent years yeah. because we've just been convicted of our time is short and are we using it to the best of our ability? Absolutely. So we look for people that we're in community with at church. Our kids, each of them, know several of our friends who they could reach out to in a heartbeat. Wow. Who they have their phone numbers, they have the ability to text. Um, and, and so we're, we're looking, and Jeff, we're not above going up to people and saying, I would say this, a lot of times the people that you want mentoring your kids are extremely busy people. Yeah. And so they don't necessarily have time to just go have coffee with your kid. But if you can say, hey, my child can come over and he can pull weeds like like a champion right beside you. Can he do that? Um, he, he, you know, what's something you're already doing that you could take them along? You know, what I, what I found too is and I'm, th- I'm thinking of somebody very specific right. that, um, that I've used for a personal mentor, but I also want for my kids. And they are so humble that it almost gets in the way that they're Absolutely. like, oh, there's like 20 better people. I'm like, no, 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 no. You're the one that I want. And, and it's, it, it's the humility that's also kind of part of the deal. Like, I want them to get that as well. Uh, but, yeah, I just I, I think about what you really struck a nerve with. How much time are you allowing different people to have access to your kids? We, it's yes. why we pray over our, our teachers. Uh, yes. I try to tell them without being too weird and too pastor-ish that, hey, we're people of faith. And these are children of promise, and there's there's a there's a reason, you know, that that we believe you're in their life, um, right. and uh, we've been so far just so blessed with great great teachers. Um, I want to talk about significant people in the Bible, and I know this is a weird question, but it's one that I pose to you: Who in the Bible do you look at and go? Because for so much of it is like it's a cautionary tale, like let's yeah. don't. Let's don't go that right. way. Right. But but who do you look at as kind of a, a you know a hero that you say, well, if we could raise kids like that, or if we could have you know just different uh, different things that you you read in the Bible and say, that's what I want for my kids. Okay, I, I thought of two just right off the top of my head. First off, um, I, I, I we always hold up Joseph right. because. Joseph knew, I mean, the Lord was faithful and revealed to Joseph his plan, but everything in Joseph's life pointed to the fact that he'd heard God wrong. And so we're, we're wanting our kids to see you, they, they feel in some ways, what, here's my gifts. Here's where I think the Lord is leading me. And so we're just wanting to, to show them, hold on to the Lord. Yeah. Joseph held on to the Lord. It was, you can be a child of promise and still have great struggle, yeah. false accusations. Um, and so we're, we're wanting them to see, hey, hold on. You've got to, you've got to strengthen your grip on faith. 
Yeah. And the Lord is going to teach you. Jeff, I was thinking as even on our last question about teachers, our, our kids are old enough now that they, I, I'm thinking of one in particular, had a very difficult teacher, yeah. a very difficult teacher. Now, are we, we, we knew we've prayed about their teachers every single year. And we've recognized that teacher as a gift from God when they were an absolute adorable blessing. So we have to recognize the teacher. The Lord didn't go one summer without hearing our prayers. He heard our prayers. He knew that this particular teacher was going to develop in our child the gift of persevering under a critical eye. Wow. And man... I don't know why this child is going to need that, except the fact that we all need it. Right. We all have got to learn to persevere under critical Because sometimes they're going to have a boss, they're going to yes. have a coworker that is going to be oh, exactly word. like this, and they will yes. learn it from their eighth grade science teacher. We, we have smiled so big. Our oldest son is is working at a local grocery store and, and, and just his stories that he comes home. He's lived in such a sweet world. Right. Um, but to come home and tell, I mean, where just some of the stories he's told were like, man, you, you got to persevere. You got to keep going. There are there are odd people in all places in I, the world. I lament the idea that my kids are going to be spoiled by the world. And I hold on to these great stories. Our Parker, our youngest, he has just a wonderful way of expressing himself. And he, this was years ago. He said, Dad, the worst words you can say are F and S. And my eyes got as big as plates. And I'm like, good grief. He's been spoiled. And he said, fart and stupid were the worst words that you could the say. Word, I love it. It's so, and so Sometimes Rhonda and I will remind each other that that's the worst words you can say. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Um, okay, and one more. Yeah. Yeah, Daniel, man, a heart that is that committed to prayer, that you're willing to put it all on the line so you can yeah. talk to God. Yeah. That's the relationship we want them to have. You know, for, for us, it was Hannah because we prayed Hannah's prayer. And we, for, for years, just longed to have children and then uh, got one, you know, and then thought we had won the lottery and then yes. I got another scratch off ticket and there it was again. And, uh, but the idea, now I think of the, you know, cause you, you say, oh, Hannah was so steadfast. How in the world do you think you're going to give this child back to the Lord after <laughs> You know, and all I can think of when I asked that question, Becky, was, you know, sometimes it's Hannah for me. Like, I want to devote my kids to the Lord. And then sometimes it's Abraham going up up the mountain with <laughs> Isaac. And it's like, yeah, we're going to go. We're going to get biblical today, buddy. You know, like yes, yes, <laughs> the Lord, yes, will, I, he's going to well, he's going to give the sacrifice like he'll provide, you know. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> we say all real often. Um, just yesterday, one of our kids friends said, I think you're the nicest person you remind me so much of jesus and one of our kids was like sometimes she's jesus flipping over the tables in the temple i was like hey it's both kinds you know so it's it's all there you know the the, i and i prefaced it by saying um that a lot of tales in the bible or people that god uses are are flawed um and we learn from that what do you do when your kids blow it? When they just really, you know, they, they miss the mark and like how, how you guys have, I know have had to navigate that by now. Yes. Yeah. Um, first off, one of Jeff, we talk a lot about in, in Romans where it says God is for you. If God is for you, who can be against you? Tony and I've really had to concentrate on being parents that, that say, Hey, God is for you. And so am I. And, and that has mean, and one of our kids said very pointedly, pointedly to me a few years ago, um, you talk a lot about no one gets a perfect kid. No one. I mean, none of us are, he, he said, I've heard you say no one gets to raise Jesus. And yet you're so mad when we're not perfect. You're so mad. I don't understand. Is it okay for other people to have imperfect kids? But you, you, and I mean, this was a very tense conversation. Right. It's, it still brings tears to my eyes when I think about it because he was right. And he was right to call me on it. Yeah. And so our kids have blown it. And let me just say that sometimes they've blown it and we've blown it with them. Right. 
Right. I mean, we've had to come yeah. back and we've had to say, hey, I did not yeah. extend a l- ounce of grace yeah. to you in that moment. Yeah. And and I should have taken a breath and I should have gotten a hold of myself. So we're working on that. It's a, it's a work in progress. But I would say this, when our kids have blown it, I remember very specifically Tony telling one of our kids who had made a mistake that was in some ways public. And yeah. he, he, he felt the weight of that shame. He felt the weight of it. And I remember Tony telling him, listen, you're at the bottom of the pit right now. You're at the bottom of the pit. And if we could have written a different story for you, yeah. we, would have, we would have written this out. We would not have put this in your story. But at the pit, at the bottom of the pit, the Lord's going to use this because he redeems everything. So you take a good look around because for the rest of your life, part of your job as someone who walks with Jesus is going to be reaching down and pulling other people out. Yeah. You're going to find the way out. And then part of your testimony is going to be reaching back and pulling people out as well. So I think it's recognizing that when we say the Lord works in all things for good, yeah. we always want that to be like the flowers and sunshine <laughs> and roses. Yeah. But but the sin and the part where we get dirty and where it feels embarrassing, um, we have to just call ourselves back to Absolutely. he works for good in all things. And this is all things. We un- Unbelievably, we're at the end of our time. And there's two questions I've got to get to, which okay. is what you, you work in this. You're writing resources. What are some of the resources that you think, man, I'm so glad I found this book, this podcast, this blog, this person. What What is it that's blessing you? I mean, I'll tell you the the life changer for us that our kids are so sick of hearing about, and it's not even a it's not even a parenting book, but Jeff, this book, uh, can you see it? Uh, it's emotionally healthy spirituality. Have you read that? Uh, yes, yes. It is. It, the tagline is "It's impossible to be spiritually mature while remaining emotionally immature." Yes. I watch Pete Scazzaro. I listen to him all the time. I am constantly taking in his thoughts and recognizing because when we took his test on emotional maturity, Tony and I both were emotional toddlers, which isn't where you want to be when you're 46. So, I mean, we're listening to him. I know if Tony was here, he would say, "Uh, y'all are, y'all are going to smile or at least I smile, but he loves listening to Phil Robertson's. What is it? I mean, oh, I, I, he's he's going to be mortified that I can't. How remember to kill it. ducks and love Jesus? I think is what it's I called. I mean, probably. I something, something but like he and his sons have yes. a podcast where they are just sitting around a table talking, talking of things of faith. Yeah. And and every once in a while they'll say things that we're like, oh, I don't, I don't. I mean, is that how we feel? Is that is yeah. is that? It makes us think different. It also, Jeff, models for us the open conversation of faith. Because yes. here's the thing. Yes. Our kids are going to come to us at points. I was We were driving down the road the other day, and one of our boys said, do you ever find yourself praying and then think, this is dumb. This feels ridiculous, talking to someone I don't see. Yeah. And we, I, we just said, you know what? Absolutely. Yeah, we do. It does. It still happens. Right. And I'm, I, but here's, I've seen the Lord work. I know that he's done. I've seen him work life changes in myself and in other people. And, and so hold on to it, but you're going to have doubts. And so just those open conversations of faith. But as far as resources, Jeff, I'm reading all the time. There's so many great, I love Sacred Parenting by Gary Thomas. Um, And he has one that's Sacred Marriage where he says, what if the goal isn't that you would be happy, but that you would be holy? Oh, it is so many great life-changing books. Well, and this book that's coming out, we should not, I mean, we can't fail to mention that, right? Yes. (laughs) You know what? That's Navigating Motherhood. It is, it's available at the, at, at the keepgoingshop.com. It'll be available on Amazon in August on August 4th. Well, I there can't you go. Believe it. Hey, yes. this was a weird question, but I, I wanted to ask it at the very end. Who do you go to when you don't know who to go to? When you're just at, when you're just at the, your lowest 
and you're like, I don't even know what to do. Who, who do you pick up the phone and, and text? And you call? know what? I mean, I, first off, I feel like, Jeff, I may be one of the richest people in the world. I really do. Yeah. Because I feel like the Lord has put around me a team of people who can pull me out of dark places yeah. or out of, I mean, I, I, I'll be honest. I really often call my parents yeah. and, and talk to them. My siblings, my parents did a fantastic job when we were going up of saying, Hey, this is your team. It's your team. My brothers and my sister are some of the first people I reach out to. Yeah. Um, also really blessed because I married someone that I, I love to reach out to. But Jeff, I'll tell you this. The Lord, I just believe that he continuously throws us life preservers yep. if we just ask. Yep. And so that question is such a good one because there are times if, if it's a thing of faith, so often I'll call this particular friend. Yep. If it's a question of parenting, I will go to another direction. I mean, I just think when, when you start having these questions, there's a lot of people out there that have particular wisdom Absolutely. that I'll say, God, who is it today? Show me. And he does. Well, this has been great. And we never really even mentioned the pandemic or COVID-19 or like, you know, quarantine and all that stuff. I love just talking about the Lord with people who love the Lord. <laughs> and uh, if we had talked about nothing, parenting or motherhood or any of that, this would have been a blessing to me. And uh, so, hey, I should say to our audience, thanks for listening in. I think we've just kind of allowed you to eavesdrop. Really, this was just a conversation for me and an old friend to have about uh, parenting and, and the Lord. So God bless you. Thanks for joining us. And uh, we'll see you next week.